Shimad Bhagavatam Grantaraja Ki Jai. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Janmarasya Yatan Yato 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 Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaye Muyantiyat Surayaha Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaye Muyantiyat Surayaha Tejo Varimedam Yata Vinimayo Yatra Trisago Mesha Tejo Varimedam Yata Vinimayo Yatra Trisago Mesha Damna Svena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi Damna Svena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi O my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O all pervading personality of Godhead. O all pervading personality of Godhead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. The creation, sustenance, destruction of the manifested universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and directly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. He is the only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitra Votra. Paramo nirmatsaranam satam. Vedyam vastavam atra vastu. Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. Shimad bhagavate mahamuni krite. Kimva parer ishwaraha. Sadyo hiti avurudyate tra. Krite bihi susu subis takshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth is the reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturur galitam falam. Nigama kalpaturur galitam falam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samyatam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samyatam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Mohur aho raska bhuvi bhava kaha. Mohur aho bhuvi bhava kaha. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sugadeva Goswami. 
Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Hriyantaksto Abhadrani Vidu Nati Suhitsatam To hear about Krishna from the Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nastapresu Bhadresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge as he hears more about Krishna from the, Bhag from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhavo Kamalo badayas chaye Cheta etara navitam Sitvam sattve prasiddhati By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material loss and avarice are diminished. And the material loss and avarice become diminished. Evam prasana manaso. Evam prasana manaso. Bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat tattva vijnana. Bhagavat tattva vijnana. Mukta sangha sijayate. When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of Krishna of, of God perfectly. Science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarvasamsaya. Chidyante sarvasamsaya. Chidyante chasya karmani. Drista evat manishwari. This thus, bhakti yoga severs the hard knot of a material of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram, understanding the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 13, verse number 51. Dhritarashtra Sahabhartra Gandharya Cha Swabharyaya Dakshinena Himavata Rishinam Ashramam Gata Translation and purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. O King, your uncle Dhritarashtra, his brother Ridura, and his wife Gandhari have gone to the southern side of the Himalaya mountains where there are shelters of the great sages. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. 
To pacify the mourning Maharaj Yudhisthira, Narada first of all spoke from the philosophical point of view, and then he began to describe the future movements of his uncle, which he could see by his foreseeing powers, and thus began to describe as follows. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So Narada Muni is Trikalagya. He can see past, present, and future. That's what happens when, we, when you become a celebrate student. And Narada Muni, from what I know, never took sannyas. He always remained a brahmachari. So what's important is celebracy. And, and when a person preserves their vital fluids, it is possible that those fluids go upwards through the spinal column and fertilizes the brain so that one can have, uh, one can be shrutidhar, have complete uh, recall. You hear something once, you remember the rest of your life. And eventually one develops trikalagya, being able to see past, present, and future, like Narada Muni. Okay, text 52. Shroto bi sapta bi yavai. Shroto bi sapta bi yavai. Swaduni sapta da vyadat. Swaduni sapta da vyadat. Saptanam pritayanana. Saptanam pritayanana. Sapta shrota prachaksate. The place is called Sapta Rota, divided by seven, because there the rivers of the sacred Ganges were divided into seven branches. This was done for the satisfaction of the seven great rishis. Text 53. Sanatvam usavanam tasmin. Udva Chagnin Yatavidi Udva Chagnin Yatavidi Abhaksha Upasantatma Abhaksha Upasantatma Saaste Vigataisana Saaste Vigataisana Translation provided by Srila Prabhupada. On the banks of the Saptarota, Dhritarashtra is now engaged in beginning Astanga Yoga by bathing three times daily in the morning, noon, and evening by performing the Agnihotra sacrifice with fire and by drinking only water. This helps one control the mind and the senses and frees one completely from thoughts of familial affection. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. On the banks of the Saptarota, Dhritarashtra is now in, um, excuse me, the yoga system is a mechanical way to control the senses and the mind and divert them from matter to spirit. The preliminary processes are the sitting posture, meditation, spiritual thoughts, manipulation of air passing within the body, and gradual situation in trance facing the absolute person, Paramatma. Such mechanical ways of rising to the spiritual platform prescribe some regulative principles of taking baths daily three times, fasting as far as possible, sitting and concentrating the mind on spiritual matters, and thus gradually becoming free from vishaya, or material objectives. Material existence means to be absorbed in the material objective, which is simply illusory. House, country, family, society, children, property, and business are some of the material coverings of the spirit, atma 
and the yoga system helps one to become free from all these illusory thoughts and gradually turn toward the absolute person, Paramatma. By material association and education, we learn simply to concentrate on flimsy things, but yoga is the process for getting them all together. Modern so-called yogis and yoga systems manifest some magical feats and ignorant persons are attracted by such false things or they accept the yoga system as a cheap healing process for diseases and gross body. But factually, the yoga system is the process of learning to forget what we have acquired through the struggle for existence. Dhritarashtra was all along engaged in improving family affairs by raising the standard of living of his sons or by usurping the property of the Pandavas for the sake of his own sons. These are common affairs for a man grossly materialistic and without knowledge of the spiritual force. He does not see how this can drag one from heaven to hell. By the grace of his younger brother Vidura, Dhritarashtra was enlightened and could see his grossly illusory engagements. And by such enlightenment, he was able to leave home for spiritual realization. She, Nara Dadeva, was just foretelling the way of his spiritual progress in a place which was sanctified by the flow of the celestial Ganges. Drinking water only, without solid food, is also considered fasting. This is necessary for advancement of spiritual knowledge. A foolish man wants to be a cheap yogi without observing the regulative principles. A man who has no control over the tongue at first can hardly become a yogi. Yogi and bogi are two opposite terms. The bogi, or the merry man who eats and drinks, cannot be a yogi. For a yogi is never allowed to eat and drink unrestrictedly. We may note with Prophet how Dhritarashtra began his yoga system by drinking water only, sitting calmly in a place with a spiritual atmosphere, deeply absorbed in the thoughts of Lord Hari, the personality of Godhead. Srila Prabhupada Patita Pavana Ki Jai. So we see how we need to transfer our thoughts from material things to spiritual things. And there are different ways of doing it. One is through this severe yoga system. It's, it's called a mechanical way to control the senses and the mind and to divert them from matter to spirit. But there's another way. The other way is called Krishna consciousness. It's a happy way. Susakam kartam avyayam. There's chanting, dancing, and feasting. So that's a happy way. And hearing Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita, regular uh, regulated way every day, morning and evening, and engaging in all kinds of devotional service services that are usually very fun because making garlands, dressing the deities, going on sankirtan, distributing books, and talking to people and relating to people and giving out prasadam. All these things are fun, actually. They're, they're wonderful activities. And they're re relational. You, everything is in relation to people. See? Whereas the yogi has to, cut, he has to cut off those relations. Just like we see Dhritarashtra. He goes. He's basically alone. Right? Okay, he goes with his wife, but he's not attached to his wife anymore. And he goes with Kunti, but he's not attached to Kunti anymore. The whole idea is to become detached completely from all material relations and people. So 
usually the yogis are alone in their meditation. But Krishna consciousness, the more the merrier, the more people, the more happy happiness, chanting, dancing, feasting, etc. So uh, we see how dangerous and sad modern life is. Everything has become denatured. For example, today people uh, have adopted yoga. You, you, there's so many yoga societies now, right? But it's all about, uh, the, first of all, they, they preface their yoga classes with, this is not religious, right? Am I right, Prabhu? <laughs> if you say it's religious, then nobody's going to come. This is not religious. This is a science of, you know, how to breathe and how to twist your body into a pretzel. And uh, you do this, this uh, asana, this uh, movement, and that movement. And you see these yoga uh, lessons on television or on the internet, you know. And usually a guy is very, the man is, or the woman is, speaks in a soft voice. And, and now we're going to do the lotus. And let's meditate and, and think about nothing. <laughs> think about nothing? Uh, that's not possible. But they, they, they talk all this nonsense. Everything has become watered down to uh, completely away from the real goal of, the yoga, of yoga. Yoga means connecting to God, to Krishna. And they're connecting to the body. They're connecting to the body more and more. And there, there are some yoga places nowadays where only for women, and the whole yoga is having an orgasm. You see how crazy people have become. Right. So, anyway, uh, the preliminary processes are the sitting postures, meditation, spiritual thoughts, manipulation of air passing within the body, and gradual situation in trance, facing the absolute person, Paramatma. Okay, it's not an easy process, let's put it like that. And very few people can actually do this. Like, if you, if you count, how many sadhus are there in the Himalayas doing this, right? Out of one, over one billion people, there's hardly two or three thousand. And amongst them, there are very few that are actually really sincere. You could probably count them on your hands, right? So, uh, this is a very uh, elite group of people, these, these, sad, these the satira sadhus, the ones who are actually doing what Dhritarashtra is doing, right? So it's not for the mass of people. A mass of people can't do this, it's too attached. But yet, you can stay at home, you can may stay in the family and still become totally detached by practicing this fun and ecstatic process of Krishna consciousness. There, this is something that Prabhupada has spread all over the world to, as an alternative to all this nonsense that's going on, you see. But people say, oh no, that's too easy, you know, I, I like yoga, you know, I, I like to put my foot behind my ear and breathe through one nostril and, uh, you know, all that nonsense. But uh, this is the real yoga, bhakti yoga, you know. Krishna says that uh, of all yogis, the bhakti yogi is the greatest. Yoginam apisarve saman gatarat manat manam. Shadavam bhajate yomam same yukta tamo matak. The same yukta tamo matak means of all the yogis, the bhakti yogi is the greatest, is the best. So, as we say in English, take the best and leave the rest. Why should we follow the nonsense yogis? Why should we waste our time becoming more attached to the body through so-called yoga, through so-called meditation? It's better to take this joyful path, 
susakam kartam abhiyam. So therefore, Prabhupada says in this verse, it says, bhajate yomam. He says, the word bhajate is significant here. Bhajate has its root in the verb baj, which is used when there is a need of service. The English word worship cannot be used in the same sense as baj. Worship means to adore or to show respect and honor to the worthy one. But service with love and faith is especially meant for the supreme personality of Godhead. One can avoid worship one can avoid worshiping a respectable man or a demigod and may be called discourteous. But one cannot avoid serving the Supreme Lord without being thoroughly condemned. Every living entity is part and parcel of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And thus, every living entity is intended to serve the Supreme Lord by his own constitution. Failing to do this, he falls down. So now we know <laughs> why there's so many fallen people in the world. Because they don't realize what their real identity is. Their, our real identity is, uh, as, as uh, Lord Chaitanya says, uh, that uh, our real position is to be the eternal servant of Krishna. Because we're part and parcel of Krishna. You cannot separate the part from the whole without some kind of tragedy, right? Like if you separate your hand from your arm, is that something good or bad? It's something bad. So if we try and separate ourselves from Krishna, it's a tragedy, it's bad. Our constitutional position, we are made part and parcel of the, of the Lord. We cannot be separated. But we can pretend to be in an illusory state of mind. And that whole thing is an illusion. It's not real. So people who try to be separated from God, they just go deeper and deeper into illusion and suffering. So therefore Prabhupada says, one can avoid worshipping a respectable man or a demigod and may be called discourteous. But one cannot avoid serving the Supreme Lord without being thoroughly condemned. I remember one time I was invited to this very wealthy man's house and uh, he uh, had invited some famous uh, speaker from India. Uh, he was supposed to be, you know, one of these uh, super self-help guru. Right. So, and this guy was a little bit aggressive, so he asked the host, he was a very wealthy man, he said, uh, who is he exactly? Right. He mentioned his name, who is he exactly? So nobody said anything. So I raised my hand and I said, he's a servant. He said, wrong. And you know, <laughs> how can he say wrong, right? We are all servants, right? Either you, you serve your family or you serve your country or you serve your, uh, like, what does uh, Trump say? He said, I'm servant of the people. You're right. The president is servant of the people. Uh, he's elected by the people, and he's supposed to serve the people. So everybody's a servant, but they're serving illusory masters. When they decide to serve Krishna, then they become a real person. So I got up upset with this guy, and I, I said, no, I said, everyone is a servant. He said, no, that's wrong. So you see how the great speakers are actually speaking nonsense. The great religions are actually misrepresenting the religion. The great yogis are actually misrepresenting yoga. The great philosophers are actually anti-philosophical. This, this is the situation. And one time when I was with Prabhupada, uh, he was sitting in the back. I was in, sitting in front of a car. And I turned around and, and Prabhupada was speaking. At one point he said, Kali Yuga, he said, very bad. Everything is backwards. Good is bad, bad is good. <laughs> the way he said it was so, was so impelling. He said, everything is bad. It's all backwards. Right? They're, they're teaching yoga to be more attached to the body. 
they're uh, saying that the goal of life is sense gratification, when the goal of life is to please Krishna, not to please ourselves. They're saying that we're not servants, but actually we're all servants. See? So everywhere you go, in every educational system, in every so-called religious society, there's misrepresentation. Just like in Christianity, there's some famous preachers now who preach prosperity theology. What does that mean? Uh, this, uh, there's this one guy who's very, very famous as, as a big church. He said, God wants you to be rich. And if you tithe the temp the, the, our, our church, you have to give minimum 10% of your income to that church, you'll become rich. Actually, he's the one that's getting rich. <laughs> you see, the whole thing is cheating. And wait a minute, does God want us to be rich? Materially, what, what do we say? Nadanam, Rajanam, Nasundarim, Kavitam Vajagadishu Kamai. I don't want any amount of wealth. I don't want to enjoy beautiful women. I don't want uh, any number of followers or disciples. I only want your causeless devotional service, birth after birth. So, service. Service is what we, because that's our position to serve. Jivera Swarupahaya Nityera Krishna Das. Das means servant, right? Follower. Someone asked me, what's your name? I said, Harivilaz Das. He said, oh, you're Indian. I said, no, I'm not Indian. <laughs> said, How come you have an Indian name? And he said, by, by the way, he said, it sounds like Bengali name. I said, no, it's a spiritual name. It reveals who I am. I'm a Das. I'm a servant. I'm the servant of the servant of the servant, right? And that other nine says, says, you're wrong. He's not a servant, right? So this is what we're up against today. The, the, and people are teaching the opposite of the truth and calling it truth. It's like a bottle of poison, but with a la label nectar, Let's see? Then Prabhupada says, he says, Every living entity is part and parcel of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and thus every living entity is intended to serve the Supreme Lord by his own constitution. Failing to do this, he falls down. The Bhagavatam 11.5.3 con confirms this as follows. Ya esam purusham shakshad atma prabhavam ishwaram nabhajant Avajananti stanad brastaha patatyada. Anyone who does not render service and neglects his duty unto the primeval Lord, who is the source of all living entities, will certainly fall down from his constitutional position. Okay. Over and over again, it's saying service. We're meant to serve the Lord by constitution. Constitution means that's the way you're made. And as long as we avoid that, we fall down. We have unnecessary troubles and confusion and illusion and so forth. In this verse also, the word bhajanti is used. Therefore, bhajanti is applicable to the Supreme Lord only, whereas the word worship can be applied to demigods or to any other common living entity. The word avajananti used in this verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, that's the verse we just read, is also found in the Bhagavad Gita. Avajananti mam mudha, only the fools and rascals deride the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna. Such fools take it upon themselves to write commentaries on the Bhagavad Gita without an attitude of service to the Lord. Consequently, they cannot properly distinguish between the word Bhajanti and the word worship. Now this is interesting. See, m most of the time you think you know, worship is the real thing, but worshiping can be given. Worship can be given to anyway, anyone. But the word Bhajanti is reserved uniquely for Krishna. See, therefore, this verse says, 
योगिनाम अपिसारे सम मद गंतनात्म गाद मद गंतनात्मना श्रद्धवान बजते यो मम सा मे युक्त तमो मत एंड इन दिस अदर वर्स इट सेड ना बजांति अवजानांति स्थानात ब्रस्त पतंत यद सो हियर प्रोपर इज शोइंग अस हाउ प्रिसाइस संस्कृत इज देयर इज अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन worship and baj there's a difference between uh, bajanti which is only applicable to the supreme lord say and baj uh, is is different than the word worship worship means to adore to show respect and honor to the worthy one but service with love and faith is especially meant for the supreme personality of godhead that's baj So Sanskrit is so precise. Uh, like in English, there's only one word for love, but in Sanskrit, there's many words for love, because there's many different kinds of love. Okay. So, then, therefore, the culmination of all kinds of yoga practices lies in bhakti yoga. All other yogas are but means to come to the point of bhakti in bhakti yoga. Yoga actually means bhakti yoga. All other yogas are progressions toward the destination of bhakti yoga. This is what they should be teaching in the yoga classes, right? No, they say no, no. This is kriya yoga. No, this this is raja yoga. No, this is hatha yoga. No, this is this yoga, that yoga. As if that's the ultimate goal. There's a yoga ladder. From the beginning of karma yoga to the end of bhakti yoga is a long way to self-realization. Karma yoga without fruit of results is the beginning of this path. So th there again, people say, "Oh, karma yoga, yeah, yeah, we understand what karma yoga is. That's taking care of your family, and driving a taxi, earning money, and bringing it home, and buying uh, food, and uh, sending your kids to school." That, that's not exactly what karma yoga is. Karma yoga means serving the Lord without any material desires. That's what karma yoga is. Karma yoga without fruit of results is the beginning of this path. When karma yoga increases in knowledge and renunciation, the stage is called jnana yoga. When jnana yoga increases in meditation on the super soul by different physical processes, and the mind is on Him, it is called astanga yoga. And when one surpasses the Astanga Yoga and comes to the point of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, it is called Bhakti Yoga, the culmination. Factually, Bhakti Yoga is the ultimate goal, but to analyze Bhakti Yoga minutely, one has to understand these other yogas. The yogi who is progressive is therefore on the true path of eternal good fortune. Key word: progressive. Progressive means. You go from one thing to another to reach the ultimate goal. Okay, so we'll stop right there. Are there any questions? There are many points in this purport. I didn't cover all of them. Yeah. Well, uh, Paramatma is also Lord Hari, right? So the question is, Dhritarashtra is doing Astanga Yoga, but the last sentence of the purport says that Dhritarashtra began the, his yoga system by drinking water only and sitting calmly in a place with a spiritual atmosphere, deeply absorbed in the thoughts of the Lord Hari, the personality of Godhead. Well, yeah, because he did not, he was not meditating on his body. He was meditating on Lord Vishnu, Paramatma. And another name of Lord Vishnu is Hari, right? He takes away the miseries of people. Well, because Dhritarashtra was instructed correctly in yoga, whereas 
uh, the bogey yogi who said, you have to meditate on the air flowing in your lower chakra and bring it up to the next chakra and then bring it up to the next chakra and bring it, you know, you're meditating on the body, not meditating on the Lord. Whereas right from the beginning, Vidura explained, you know, the goal of all yoga is, is, is Lord Hari or Paramatma or Krishna, right? Or Vishnu. And And the beginning is uh, controlling the mind and the senses and diverting them from matter to spirit. There's no such thing like that in yoga that's being taught today. They're, they're focusing on the body. Right. Okay, so we'll stop now. Thank you very much. All glory to Srila Prabhupada.